What are some SEO, dumb SEO mistakes people make that you mm-hmm. see that they come to you with their blog and they're like, cool, I've done all of these things. Mm-hmm. Isn't this great? Are you sort of like, oh no, like that's a, that's a bit of a mistake. We need to fix this or clear this up. What are some of the common ones that you see that people make? Well, most of them I know because I made them. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. But really, so like I see a lot of clients slash I did this as well. Like you write you write content based on what you want and what you think people are searching and use verbiage that you think is working. When in reality, nobody phrases it like that, except maybe you and your mama, because she taught you how to talk, (laughs) you know, or like, I see a lot of people make, um, make the mistake of not using their H2 text strategically in their blogs. So they've got a great title, but that's the only place that that keyword is in that carries any weight. You know, and so, I mean, I just remember thinking, oh, I've written all this stuff. Why isn't it ranking? And like, oh, well, because you're not using keywords strategically, you know, or they'll write blogs, but they're just writing blogs to blog and not actually creating content that people are searching, which, you know, I'm a writer. I get that. I like to journal. I like to write for fun. I mean, it's, it's cool, but nobody's searching my journal entries. You know, they're searching things that solve their problems. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel with the H2s, just for people listening, H1 is your, your you know, your main title. And then you have your H2, which you like kind of, you could call them your subtitles, but mm-hmm. um, on each and you have different ones for each, I would say paragraph or mm-hmm. a couple of paragraphs. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing about the H2s is it's the opportunity to add your keywords in, which makes it easier for Google to find keywords words on the page but Mm -hmm. also it breaks up the content and it allows people to see the it's easier to read rather than just Mm -hmm. like a big text that's like I mean the bible's great but it's 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 hard to read like it's not the most user-friendly thing and then you've got you got if you had subheadings and stuff you'd Mm -hmm. be like okay this is cool I know what this bit's about and then you can go through the Mm -hmm. copy a lot quicker. Do you find that those H2s actually help people to and I want to get onto copy because copy is a big part of what you do helps mm-hmm. people to write better copy if they have if they start with h2s first mm, you know i don't start with h2s first i so here's here's my process and it's a little bit backwards <laughs> from probably what it should be <laughs> because i so i like to create based more on inspiration than actual research first so i'll create based mm-hmm. on inspiration and connection points and for the person And then I'll go back and I'll optimize for SEO. So like I'll have this idea, you know, I've got this content or, you know, my client has a content idea. We'll create the content and then we'll go back and we'll optimize those H2 and really create an optimized title um, using keywords in those H2, you know, subheadings. And for me, it was really hard to kind of get over the whole breaking text up because I have a minor in English. Like I'm used to the, you know, formatted Hmm. all of my T's dotted and I's crossed and, you know, somebody cares about my typos and my spelling errors, <laughs> you know, I'm getting knocked down for that. Not that it made me do any better, but I did try, you know, and so to like make that mental shift from like, oh, like people skim blogs, mm. they don't read every word. And Correct. so if you make it hard to get the main points, like pff, they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. You got to realize that people, when they pick up a book, they're prepared mentally to Mm -hmm. read the book for how it is versus Mm -hmm. when you're on the internet, you're either wasting time or being super productive. Most Mm -hmm. of the wasting time is on the social apps. Right. Being super productive is like, I need an answer yesterday for how do I fix this or how do I do this in my life? Uh, rather right. than like, oh, I'm just going to sit down and, re- you know, have a cup of tea and, and read a blog post. I'm not sure mm-hmm. too many, like too many people do that. Uh, I, I know for myself, it's not me, but. Yeah, um, not me either. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm sitting down to read with a cup of tea, it's a book. It's yeah. a real book. Yes. Yes. Physical book. So that brings us and beckons the question on how do people write better copy for their blog posts? So they're actually the content doesn't just rank, but people read, read it. I know that you said you've got to have it broken up, but Mm -hmm. what are some of your copy tips? So one of, one of my main things is if you're not, if you, if you don't watch American Westerns, you may not use this term, but it's just to get to the rat killing, like just get to the rat killing, like quit beating around the bush. Like, get to the point. Like everybody loves, you know, finding recipes online, but I hate reading somebody's life story about what their cat ate that day and their favorite outfit before they give me the recipe. recipe. 
Like yes. give the people what they came for. Mm-hmm. Like Yoast is a great plugin on WordPress. I'm sure you're familiar with it, but Yoast literally gives you the green light. If you have 300 words or more, like mm-hmm. you don't have to write a blog that is 5,000 words long to rank. You really don't like this. <laughs> yeah. For a recipe, like just how Come many on. cups of flour do I need? Yes. Do I have enough to make these cookies at 11 PM? Like just yeah. tell me, you know? Yeah. And so people like get to the point, be clear, write like yourself, because again, if we wanted AI generated content, we would go read AI generated content, like use your voice, write like yourself, mm-hmm. use things like use free tools like Grammarly to spell check, edit with fresh eyes. I'm ter- I'm a terrible editor. So I have to pay somebody to edit my client work for me. <laughs> because I'm like, I, yeah, I'm like, um, I don't pay somebody to edit mine. It's like, if it is what it is, what it is. But I pay somebody to edit client work. So edit with fresh eyes, use Grammarly, you know, get to the point. And then don't be afraid to tell people what you told them again in a new way. Because we are all inundated with so much information. You know, we have more content coming at us than ever before in human existence. And so we need to hear something more than once to retain it. So it's okay if you have to reiterate a point or shore up a point. And remember, people are skimming your blog anyway. They're probably not reading it word for word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, the the more fluff you have, the more they're going to skim and mm-hmm. the more they're going to miss when you finally get to the point in like a hidden way in one of the paragraphs. Right. It's like halfway right. through the page and they're like, all right, this yeah. is a great waste of time. Like, thanks mm-hmm. for wasting my time. And then yeah. and story, like stories are still good. Like use stories. Mm. But keep the keep the user in mind, the reader in mind for everything that you communicate, whether it's your homepage copy, like how are you solving their problem, or whether it's a blog post about your cat, like how does this affect this person? And yeah. have a servant's heart about it, really. 